Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we have another fun video on formula verification and uh, this is about formula verification of a FIFO. And towards the end of this video, you would have access to the code uh, for doing formula verification of a FIFO uh, using an open source tool called EOSIS. Uh, my name is Vinish and I work as a formula verification engineer in the industry. Prior to that, I was doing my PhD in formal. Uh, the current session is organized into three different uh, um, three different groups. Uh, first, uh, we'll see what a basic FIFO is, and then we'll discuss three different type of bugs which we'll come across while doing verification of a FIFO. And towards the end, we'll do a basic hands-on and we'll go through the code. And I'll show you how we can introduce bugs and how to uncover them using a waveform viewer called GTK Wave, and then how to fix the bug and then rerun the design uh, with the fixed uh, fixed version. What is a FIFO? A FIFO is a, simply a storage structure. Usually you see them uh, um, see them between two different parts of the design which are working in different clocks. For example, uh, let's say there is a, uh, let's say part of logic which is working at a higher clock speed and then there is another part which is working at a slower speed. And the higher, higher speed one is sending some data to the slower speed one. So because of this clock speed difference there, you need to uh, store the data uh, somewhere in the middle uh, so that uh, the slower uh, reading logic does not miss out any data which is coming from the faster faster logic. Uh, there are certain golden rules uh, while we work with FIFOs. One is never read from an empty FIFO. Empty FIFO means you don't have anything in the FIFO. So whatever you're going to read is going to be stale data. Second, don't write a full FIFO. Before we move on to the actual uh, verification, uh, let's talk about bugs. I'm, I'm classifying them into three different categories. First is the design bug. There is really some bug in the FIFO with a designer um, for uh, added by mistake. And second is uh, second and third are not real bugs in the design, but these are uh, still a problem uh, because uh, we don't uh, get to verify the FIFO or verify the design fully because of these bugs. One is, uh, is something called constraint bug. Constraint bug is when you uh, set up an environment where you feed in or constrain the input of input of the design or uh, you kind of over constrain the design or you write constraint in such a way that some con some scenarios will be masked or some wrong inputs or wrong uh, illegal values are allowed to go into the design and the third is a checker bug uh, for a verification engineer checkers are everything right you write to you try to verify some functionality you write a checker for that but what if the checker itself is wrong nobody's going to verify you a checker. So that's a much bigger problem uh, in my point of view. The next important part is the hands-on. And I give all credit to Yosis and the uh, quick start guide, which uh, where I copied the code from and then got the instructions from. So let's try to look at uh, the basic verification of a FIFO. What you see here is uh, is a code, uh, code for a FIFO. Uh, this is a very low, very low system, very low code for a FIFO. And uh, I have another file which is called .sby file, which is uh, the script which contains the set of commands for running the OSIS tool for doing formula verification. And these are the only two files you need to do uh, this exercise. This design um, has a read enable, write enable, read enable, and a read and write data and uh, an indication of whether the FIFO is full or empty, which goes to the outside world. And then there is a clock and reset. This is essentially all of the key logic uh, that you require in a FIFO. If there is a write enable, then you write the data into the internal two dimensional array for a particular address uh, specified by write address. And uh, if uh, in this case, you read, send out the data corresponding to the read address taken from the internal array to a port called read data. So between these lines uh, in this section, you have all the FIFO code. And where does the read and write address come from? In this design, uh, there is another block called address generator that is giving you the write address and the read address. Internally, uh, there are certain signals uh, one once a signal is data count 
it just tells you how many uh, elements are there in the FIFO. And it increments and decrements based on the reads and writes happening in the design. And full is uh, giving an indication of whether the data count has reached the max data, which is a maximum capacity of the FIFO. In that case, it goes high. And empty is when the data count is zero. There are no elements in the FIFO. We will come to this logic later on. And towards the end, you will see a section uh, called formal if the formal and end if for the same. This section is where you do all the formal verification. This is where you keep all your assertions and all your covers. Uh, most of the assertions and covers are straightforward. For example, if you just want to check your <clears throat> full uh, port or the functionality full, then uh, one potential assertion could be this. Uh, always when the reset uh, reset is zero, this is an active high reset. So when the reset is zero, uh, you should have either full zero or count equal to max data. And there are uh, other uh, checks for empty and then count. These are covers, right? So there are three different types of bugs which I've introduced in this design. Like you see here, first uh, is a design bug. I call it bug one and constraint bug, bug two and check bug, bug, T, bug three. Let's look at the design bug. Even uh, before that, let's run this check, uh, run this design without any bugs. So how do you run this, uh, run this tool and do the formal verification? First, uh, go to the go to the folder where you have all the files. Just a very log file and the SV file. And then uh, go to the OSS CAD environment. Uh, this is where I have OSS CAD installed. If you don't know how to install OSS CAD, uh, I recommend you go watch the previous video on installing the OSS CAD in this playlist. So you have uh, gone into the OSS CAD environment uh, in the folder where you have the <clears throat> demo files. And the command to run uh, formal verification is spy minus f and then the path to the spy file. As you can see, all the all these uh, all these lines are in green. So that essentially says that all the covers which you chose to run and the assertions are all of them passed. So that that tells you that there are no bugs in this design, or you don't have any checks or covers which are uncovering the, uncovering any of the existing bugs, or your environment is over constrained. So let's look at them one by one. Let's look at the bug one, which is a design bug. So I have uh, I have a flag bug one here. So I'm going to run formal with this flag. So I'll be defining bug one equal to one. By default, bug one is zero. Just need to pass repro bug one. It says that an assertion named FIFO uh, assertion inside the FIFO module named a underscore zero out failed. And the failure trace for that is available here. Let's first or first look at this assertion a underscore zero out. It's over here. It says that if the reset is high, which means it's in the reset phase. Then the design should give empty zero, full equal to zero and count equal to zero. And let's see why it failed. I'm going to open the failure trace um, using GTK way, which is another open source tool, and then find out how this assertion fails. Control A, insert, and it makes sense to look at all the signals which are there in the assertion. What we see here is empty is one when reset equal to one. So that's not correct. What's the what's the driving logic for empty? 
empty simply says when data count equal to zero, you just mark it as an empty. It doesn't care about whether it's in reset phase or otherwise. So this design expects or this check expects uh, empty to be high when reset is low. So the fix is to add negation of reset in here. The next category of bugs are the constraint bugs. Let's move on to bug two, which is a constraint bug. So if we enable this bug, let's see what happens. I'm closing the waveform. We're launching another run with uh, bug two. It says that the assertion mm, named a count diff that field. Let's see what a count diff is. So it simply says uh, that uh, the internal counter, which is tracking the number of elements in the in the FIFO, should be equal to the variable or should be equal to this particular uh, signal address diff or count equal to max data or an address diff equal to zero. So let's uh, first look at address diff. So it's, it, it has a particular logic associated with it. Uh, so this basic understanding is fine now for now. Let's look at the trace and see how it fails. Address diff is zero F now, and is that equal to count? It says address diff should be equal to count, which is not the case. Then is count equal to max data? No, that's that's not the case either. So I think we have a failure because address diff equal to address diff is not equal to count here, and the reason. Uh, reason here is that is this one and this came uh, based on my analysis of the design and you would also have to do it when you do for the first time since this is an introductory video i'm going to give you the reason right away so there is a read happening when the fifo is empty so that pushed uh, the read address read address to something else zero to one so essentially read address proceeded to some value whereas write address is kind of staying there there is no write that is happening, so write address can stay there. But this is kind of an illegal read. Read is happening when there is uh, there is the when the five is empty. So uh, the design is not expecting the check is uh, rather not expecting this to happen. Uh, so the design has a fix uh, a particular piece of logic, which is uh, incrementing the write address when uh, a read happens with the FIFO empty. So that way they keep to get the count equal to the address difference. This, this, these addresses are coming from, like I'd mentioned earlier, these read and write addresses. These are coming from an address generated block and which is getting uh, read skip and write skip signals. So using these skip signals, they are keeping this count write, write and read addresses and the count difference in them in sync with the count count variable in the design which is this one so that this condition is always met apparently this is not uh, this will not work if you just uh, mark read skip and write skip equal to zero which is what uh, happens when you introduce this bug you kind of uh, overwrite this logic and you say that hey mark read skip and write skip equal to zero so you have you're, you're messing up with the with this particular logic hence the failure so is this a design failure maybe not because uh, this is based on uh, the difference in addresses which is coming from an external logic so i'm kind of i'm treating it as an external constraint issue or a constraint bug but you can treat them as a design bug as well because uh, it's kind of it's somewhere in the middle so i'm just for now i'm category categorizing it as constraint bug but it kind of falls in the design and constraint bug category Now let's look at the third and final part of this uh, three different type of bugs, which is a checker bug. 
and that would be bug 3. Run your sys with bug 3. It took a bit more time, right, uh, to fail. There is something more to formal verification, which is more interesting. Uh, the most of the problems with formal verification come with the design complexity. So when the checker, when the bugs are a bit deep in the design, it, it, most many of the tools fail to get to the failure quicker. So there are techniques for complexity reduction. It might be interesting to look into it. And here, when we introduce a third bug, it says that there's another assertion, which is called a underscore overflow that failed. It says uh, always the number of data should be less than less than max data. I'm going to open the trace again. And this count is in hex, so you can change the color format, data format, and everything. I'm going to change the data format to decimal, and I see that count is can be equal to max data max data is 16 as well and hence the failure so so this is what we call as checker box by adding an equal to you can fix it that's all about the three different bugs i wanted to talk about uh, outside that there are many other assertions here which um, will be worth looking at few of them here as well but are these the only checks that you require to verify your FIFO fully? Maybe not. There are uh, other critical things like data integrity. Data integrity means if you are, if you store, if you send out a particular data into the FIFO, is it guaranteed that it's going to come out or will it be lost somewhere? Will it get overwritten? Or let's say if you write data A and data B, will it get reordered or will it will one of them get missed? There are things like that, which is, uh, verified, which can be verified using many approaches. One of them is by tracking two entries in a FIFO, or there is another advanced one which helps you track one entry in a FIFO and then fix all the data integrity issues. If you're interested in knowing more about um, the verification, data integrity verification, which I mentioned, uh, it's uh, it'll be worth looking at this blog uh, by Ashish Dabari. on harnessing the power of uh, invariant based bug hunting. I'll share the link in the description. If you want to try out uh, these techniques, uh, you might want to get um, get a license from Yosis. Feel free to write to Yosis team and get a license so that you can use all the SVA syntax uh, for, the, for these properties because the current open source version will not support it. And like I mentioned at the beginning, all this, uh, all the code and explanations are available in the Yosis QuickStart Guide itself. I'll share the link for that as well. And in the end, uh, I would love it if if you could share this video with somebody who is getting trying to get started with formal verification. And uh, please uh, subscribe and like the video so that I'll be motivated to make more videos on formal. And uh, this video will go to a wider audience. Thanks a lot, and uh, you've been an uh, amazing listener. Thank you.